It's Nolan. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid Jay Nolan here, and we got an interesting show for y'all today, man. Welcome back to Jay Nolan News. Today, we're going to be talking about Nicki Minaj pushing the album back. We're going to be talking about Busta Rhymes and his new album, Blockbuster, and you know, some of the troubles that I'm seeing some of the elder statesmen in hip hop going through trying to stay relevant while also trying to age gracefully in the space. I think Nicki Minaj also kind of falls into this category. I'm just going to be honest. I know there's some people out there that feel like I'd be hating on Nicki on my channel. I really don't have no hate for Nicki, right? But we're not going to get there just yet. We're also going to talk about Fat Joe. But before we even get to Fat Joe, we're going to talk about Andre 3000 because I think he fits into this category as well. I mean, he's already come out and said how he feels funny putting out music at the age that he's at, talking about he should rap about colonoscopies and all of this type of stuff, whatever. But he's going to be in the same subject field. Then we also have Fat Joe. He was talking about Lil Boosie. Um, he kind of went into his own tirade about artists allegedly sampling his music, which his music hasn't necessarily been sampled, but he feels like people have interpolated lyrics of his into their own songs. We're going to be talking about that as well. Also, not on the thumbnail. We're going to talk about this AI artist, you know what I'm saying, that they're trying to promote right now on social media. We're going to get into that. I talked heavily about AI earlier this year, last year, and earlier this year. I was all into the AI space, not so much in terms of uh, advocating for it, but just covering the different evolutions that were happening in the music industry surrounding AI. Those are all things that we're going to get into today. Um, so stay tuned and let's get this thing started, right? So first thing we're going to talk about is Miss Nicki Minaj. She put out this statement on social media. It was very weird. It looks like she's about to take a break from social media. Um, her album is slated to drop on December 8th. It looks like it's no longer going to be dropping on the 8th. Sad times. Nicki Minaj says, I will not stop creating my businesses or being a mom or being a musical perfectionist just to pop my p in a music video just for you to find a reason to still dig up your ass and find an issue with that too. Nor will I give you a track list. Music is a very serious business for me and many of us, but it's also my fucking art my gift from God. Do you tell physicians how to operate on your penis holes and hairlines? Would you tell a pastor how to preach his sermon in the middle of Sunday worship? Do you tell the strippers where to position their booty holes while they on the pole trying to entertain you? Do you tell Jordan how to chew his gum and move his wrist before a fucking jump shot? Being a people pleaser will never make the pleaser feel pleased. So stop. Take it from me. I've learned the hard way for years. Furthermore, she states, I'll see y'all back on this app whenever I decide to drop my album. The one I wrote. The one that is very pleasing to me. The one that's difficult to listen to for me at times due to certain songs, lyrics for reasons you'll understand one day. Bye, babies. Love you. So Nicki Minaj is about to go on an unforced hiatus. This is all voluntary. Again, it sounds like she's going to push this album back. She says it will drop when she's ready. She says that y'all cannot tell her how to make her art. Y'all cannot tell nobody else in any other profession how to do their job, right? And I'm going to just give y'all a quick little synopsis of what I think is going on. And again, I told y'all I do not hate Nicki Minaj. I'm not a huge Nicki Minaj fan. I've never claimed to be, but... I acknowledge when she goes in, I acknowledge that she can rap. I acknowledge she's immensely talented, but everything she make is not going to be for me. She pretty much caters her music to women, to young women. I'm neither of those two demographics. So it is what it is. Now, what I see going on with Nicki Minaj here is for the past couple of years, she's been teasing records, teasing this album, trying to roll it out. Unfortunately, it's not catching like that. Super Freaky Girl definitely did catch. It hit charts and it was, you know, kind of like a pop joint. Barbie Girl, that's not part of her album. That was for the Barbie World soundtrack or whatever, whatever. That did well, but that's not even attached to the Nicki Minaj album. That was good for momentum. It would have been good to follow up with something else, right? Like the album that was supposed to come. But other iterations of this Nicki Minaj rollout just have not been connecting like that. She did the song with Lil Baby. Didn't hit like that. What was it? Uh, Do We Have a Problem or something like that? Didn't really catch on. She put out uh, Red Ruby the Sleeves. That did a little something, you know, kind of gave you glimpses of young Nicki with the bars rapping. You know what I mean? The uh-oh, giving that New York vibe. 
wasn't bad. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't bad. But it didn't really hit like that neither. It didn't connect. Like people did some dances to it. TikTok kind of caught on to it a little bit. But compared to past successes that she's had, it doesn't really measure up. She dropped that alternative record last time I saw you. That definitely didn't really connect with the fan base like that. I mean, some of the some of the barbs out there, they tried to act like it was all that good heat. Like it was his personal join. And it wasn't really until the VMAs where she sampled that other song that never came out. The you bitches look up to her, you really look up to me. You know, that kind of felt like genuine Nicki Minaj energy. That felt more so like what the people have been wanting to hear from her and what they expect from her at this point. And that record still hasn't dropped. So what I believe is happening, I don't even think that this message that she put out there is necessarily for the fans. Um, it's probably the conversations that she's having with Universal Republic. Universal Republic is looking for another hit. We're a couple weeks away from the alleged release of her album and we don't have a single. We don't have a music video. She talks about, I'm not going to pop my pussy in a music video for y'all to tear it apart. So I think she's at odds with the company. And because she's at odds with the company, she doesn't want to present anything to the fans either. She wants to take a step back, reevaluate things, listen to the album a few more times, maybe add and subtract from the album to make it perfect the way she wants it. But I think the overarching issue that she's having right now is trying to find her identity in 2023. And when I say identity, I'm not talking about who she is as a person, right? I'm not talking about her persona. I'm talking about how she wants to present herself musically going into 2024. I think they were slated to have a tour going on next year. So where is the tourable music? Where is the stadium status music? We don't have it yet. We don't even have a Chun-Li necessarily to kind of have a big record. Chun-Li, it didn't hit right off the cuff when it came out. It was kind of a grower. People grow, grew onto it. The people that were really fans of hip hop loved Chun-Li because she was barring up. I even liked that song, but it took a while before it really like caught the legs that it needed. Chun-Li still gets used in TV commercials today. That joint was so hard. But where 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 do we see that? We don't have that. Earlier in the year, I kind of made a connection between Nicki Minaj and Fabulous, like super talented lyricists, super talented artists. But as they've aged in hip hop, their style has kind of become less in demand. Nicki Minaj has fared better than Fab, I will say that much, but this leads me into the next portion of my conversation with this Busta Rhymes album. He has a new album out called Blockbuster and his fans are not happy. He linked up with Timbaland and Swiss Beats. They co-executive produced the album. They got Quavo on the album. They got Blast on the album, Young Thug, Chris Brown, all these big names. And his fan base is actually not happy with it. Now, as we know, Busta Rhymes going back to the 90s was an innovator. He was a disruptor. He was the only person with his sound, the rah rah like a dungeon dragon. He had a unique style of beats that that people are still trying to duplicate to this day, maybe not in mainstream hip hop, but on the underground scene, you know, some of those ethereal beats that he had, some of those uh, abstract sounds that he liked to have in his beats, people are still trying to duplicate those tracks in the underground world. Unfortunately, Busta Rhymes is no longer making that style of music. He kind of tried to do that with extension level event two, which again was another album where it didn't really hit the way it was supposed to. It didn't connect the way that it was supposed to not because he's any less talented than he ever has been, but it sounds like he's trying to find his identity musically. And this is what I think is going on with a lot of people. These artists that come from lyrical backgrounds, being able to make lyrical hip hop, being able to make organic, authentic hip hop and excel to the highest level. Now that we're in 2023, the trends have changed so much. You know, we're in a trap world, post trap world, because now people are making drill music. Now people are making all different types of sounds. Every region has its own thing. But trap has kind of permeated on a fucking international level. Everybody's trying to do their version of that. Now we have Busta Rhymes trying to rap on trap beats. That was never his thing. That was never something that anyone anticipated from him. But now he's trying to make this album that's palatable for the billboard charts and it's not going to get there. And I want to be perfectly clear when I say that it's not going to get there. I'm not saying that to slight Busta. I'm not saying that to be disrespectful to Busta. I love Busta Rhymes. One of the illest niggas ever. Right. I studied the game. I would love to meet him. 
chop game with them, talk to them. But I would say, bro, cater to your core. Do a whole album with Knots. Some of y'all out there that's watching this, y'all are more mainstream heads. Y'all probably don't know who Knots is. Knots is one of those producers that just makes banging ass beats for hip hop heads. That's what Busta needs to be making. I don't think he understands his position. I think he kind of overestimates his position. People respect and love Busta Rhymes as the icon he is. But the mainstream world does not care about new Busta Rhymes music. Busta Rhymes fans care about new Busta Rhymes music. And a lot of people have trouble distinguishing those two things. Again, this is what I think is going on with Nicki Minaj as well. There's the music that she likes and loves. There's the music that her fans like and love. There's the hip hop crew that wants to hear what they want to hear from her. And then there's what she thinks is going to work. The crazy thing about the music industry is that once you start leaning into what you think is going to work, it rarely ever works because people could tell that you're trying. People could tell that you're reaching. People could tell that you're doing something outside yourself and it's not coming across as organic. You know, Busta went for this kind of overproduced album, getting with Swiss and Timbaland. Like they kind of wanted to bring out the motherfucking Avengers of music. So they got all these producers. They got all these artists to feature on there. And they basically cleaned up the budget to make sure that it happened. But it sounds like a clusterfuck of Busta Rhymes, Rah Rah, and Trap. It doesn't vibe well. The way that the album is mixed almost sounds weird because he's so upfront in the music. The music is kind of in the back, but the whole idea of trap music is that the trap drums and the 808s be kind of at the forefront and the artists are almost like an instrument on top of the music. That's why they do melodies and shit on top of it. Or they do like these you different flows, but we don't want to necessarily hear Busta Rhymes do the da 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 da. We want to hear Busta Rhymes do the that's totally different. That's two different things. And if you don't want to hear him do that, you want to hear rah rah like a dungeon dragon. You know what I'm saying? Like we already know what we want. He just not giving it to the people. Same thing with Timbaland. Same thing with Swiss Beats. All of these guys. They have such immense knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of music, right? They've been in it. They've been in and out of studios since they were 17, 18 years old up to now in their 40s going on 50s. I don't think that the elder statesmen in the game need to be trying to cater to young kids. This is exactly what I was talking about with Andre 3000. He feels insecure about putting out music because he's worried about how the kids, how young people will accept it. They don't give a fuck about you. You are the uncle to them. You got to walk in the room and demand respect on your own merit, on your own shit, on your own accomplishments and stand on your own shit. Trying to be like them niggas, they going to laugh at you when you leave. They're going to be like, man, that nigga crazy hell, man. That nigga just can't give it up. They dap you. They smile in your face. They going to laugh with you while you there. They love your energy, but they going to be like, man, that nigga crazy fuck once you leave. You don't want to be that nigga. Come in as your authentic self. Bring wisdom. Step into that OG role. And I'm not saying that y'all haven't. I'm not saying that y'all haven't. I'm just saying lean further into that motherfucker. Not only because the industry has changed, but also because that is how you actually lead by example. That's actually how you show other niggas that's coming up behind you. That's five, 10 years younger than you. Damn, how do I transition into being an OG my motherfucking self? If I still want to do music, how do I still connect? You connect by staying authentic, by staying organic, by sticking to the process, right? Somebody that I'd look at that's authentic and sticking to the process is Jadakiss. Everybody doesn't love Jadakiss music, but you know what? Jadakiss is going to stay true to what he does so that if he has 100,000 fans in the world, if all 20 years, 20 plus years in hip hop, he's had platinum records, he's had gold records. But in 2023, if I got a if I got a sample size of 100,000 niggas, how many of them can I get to buy this record? You don't have to play the fucking numbers game trying to go to a million. You don't need a billion streams. Nigga, you've been in the game forever. You sold real records when real records matter. Why are you still trying to prove a point? Make good music. Make tourable music. You might not go do the stadiums like you used to do, nigga. Go back. Do the 4,000, 5,000 cap rooms. Max them bitches out and had a time of your life. Get the money, go overseas, do them fucking festivals, continue to do shit like that. It's not a hard formula. You guys have 
the fucking cheat code. You've been here forever. So you got people that's going to ride with you as long as you continue to cater to them. You're still out here trying to reach new fans and that's cool, but give the people what they want. That's why artists like Currency are always rich, always dropping projects. Nigga drop five, six albums in a year. Don't give a fuck. He going to make the music for the people that he wants to hear. Currency sample size might be 50,000 people. And out of those 50,000, he might sell 30,000 units independently every time. But he owns his masters. He owns his publishing. So all the money that's coming in, he's got, he's got access to it. He's understanding where all the splits are going. It's not a hard formula when you got a built-in fan base of people that have been rocking with you for so long. You don't got to worry about the kids. Andre 3000, are you listening? Love you to death, brother. We want to see you succeed. We want to see the flute album, but we also want to see you rap. Not because you have to rap. If you want to hang that shit up, that's cool. That's your decision. But don't make that decision based on, man, I don't know if they want to hear what I got to say. That is a cop out. Niggas want to hear what you got to say. Why you think niggas keep getting you on their album? Why you think people keep waiting on it? Why do you think people are such in high demand for you to drop the rap album? Because they want to hear what you got to say. Be authentically yourself. If you want to talk about being grown, you want to talk about having to go get your motherfucking colonoscopy. You want to talk about what it's like paying taxes. You want to talk about what it's like being a star that doesn't want to really be a star no more. Talk about that. Ego death it out. You're not signed to nobody, clearly. So you could do what the fuck you want. You could do a half rap, half flute album. Y'all did the goddamn Speaker box love below. Y'all did Idle Wild with Idle Wild blues and shit with you singing. So niggas know how to accept your artistic creativity. They just want to actually see the palette. You ain't got to hide it. Now getting on to Fat Joe, okay? Now he says artists been jacking his swag, jacking his lingo, using his verbiage in their songs. He always played the back, let the shit roll off the sleeve, you know? Never wanted to take nobody to court, never wanted to sue, but he alleges that he definitely could. So let's get into what Fat Joe had to say. And then we're going to get into parlay from them franchise boys who didn't receive it all that well. Nah, unbelievable. But if you use somebody's music and you sample it and you don't clear it and you don't give them no money, they can sue you. Me personally, I have never sued nobody for that. And trust me, they don't have, make it rain, make it, make it, make it rain, or lean with it, rock with it, lean. Like, my shit's been jacked. <laughs> my, my shit been jacked. Legendary. Shoulder lean, the show. Like, my shit been jacked. Like, if I went to court, I'd be like, exhibit A. Yo, look, man, real quick, man. I just seen Fat Joe. Salute, nigga. Lean back was that cool, nigga? But I didn't hear we didn't hear lean back, nigga, and say, nigga, we finna make a song like that, nigga. I'm from the south, nigga. I'm from Bankhead, nigga. I'm from the west side, nigga. We still on our own shit, nigga. We created culture, nigga, and nigga, the music we made started a whole fucking genre, nigga. We don't bite, niggas. We start shit, nigga. Fuck is y'all niggas saying, nigga? Y'all niggas be getting beside y'all self. All y'all niggas who been doing music back then and had a little success, y'all niggas be getting fucking beside y'all self, thinking that everybody bang y'all shit. Now guess what? Shout out to that boy Boosie. Guess what? When he put them lyrics back to back, niggas is really buying his lyrics. Nigga, we said lean, nigga, not lean back, nigga. How the fuck we beat your lyrics, nigga? If you feel like that, get your motherfucking shoe on, nigga. Tired of these motherfucking hip hop, hip hop ass niggas, man. Nigga, 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 I ain't fuck all that shit, nigga. Y'all nigga talking about, nigga. I ain't bite no motherfucking fat joke. The fuck we look like, nigga. I'm from West Side, nigga. Bankhead shit, nigga. Born home, nigga. We don't bite shit, nigga. We create trends, nigga. <laughs> Shout out to Parlay from the west side of Atlanta, man. Love to see that energy. I ain't going to lie to you. I love Fat Joe, but I love Parlay too for the way he, he stood on business on this, okay? Because Fat Joe did get a little beside himself, right? Everybody that uses the word lean. So you're basically trying to say that you introduced the word lean to hip hop by saying lean back, lean back, right? That was one particular dance, lean back. All you had to do was goddamn lean back. Pale says, nigga, we made lean with it, rock with it. That's a totally different thing. You got to goddamn, you know what I'm saying? You snapping, you got them jerking, you pulling back. The totally different dance. Young Dro shoulder lean. Tried the shit on Dro. What did the shoulder lean, which was another totally different dance. If you watch the video, it's 
it's almost like the Ric Flair strut, you know what I'm saying? Or the Jeff Jarrett, you know what I mean? For y'all, for y'all non-wrestling fans, you fucking up, but it's all good. Totally different thing. But now you're making you're making it seem like anybody that used the word lean in hip hop had to be a, a derivative of you. We're not going to go with that. We're not going to ride with that, okay? Just can't do it. Now, being that he did use Dro's shoulder lean, Young Dro actually came out and he just played uh, Fat Joe's verse on uh, Make It Rain. On Make It Rain, another one of the songs that he claimed was bitten, he says, I hit her with that shoulder lean, da 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 man. Dro like, shit, how'd I bite you when you clearly used my flow and melody? On another song, Dro didn't say nothing. He just played it on the screen and said, "What you know what I mean?" And let the people understand we knew what he meant. Like nigga, I ain't bitch your shit, but you damn sure took mine. Now, in Fat Joe's eyes, in his estimation, he might have said, "Well, shit, I came out with lean back. He came out with shoulder lean. He took a little piece of mine. Let me take a little piece of his and put it in this record. Maybe that was his thought process because clearly he hasn't dropped this idea that Young Dro was one of the people that stole from him." But Dro looking like nigga, that shit didn't y'all that shit y'all did was not an inspiration for what we doing. In the South, niggas dance. In the South, niggas was turning up, going to the pool pallet, going to these different places, going to goddamn uh Central Station, all these different type places. Shit was booming. They had a whole different culture than what was going on in the East Coast up north in New York. Yeah, some of that music got some burn down here. Lean back was on the radio very heavy. It was in the clubs, but the type of clubs these niggas was on on the west side was not the same type of clubs that was getting coverage on the radio station. As a young nigga looking up to other young niggas in Atlanta, I was in high school when all this shit was happening. It's two different cultures. I got to be honest. And I wasn't the most receptive to the Atlanta shit at the time because I was actually looking at the New York niggas trying to get my lyricists on. You know what I mean? Which is why I approached my pen so surgically today for anybody that listens to my music. But I got to say, Fat Joe, hold this L, my brother. This is with love. This is with love. You know what I mean? Just hold the L. OK, now you one of the best storytellers in hip hop. When you get on that motherfucking Instagram live, you got that goddamn Pepsi or whatever you drinking on. You feel me? You tell some of the best stories in hip hop. You've been around for so many different occasions, so many historical moments. We don't take nothing from that. Right. You gave us big pun. You gave us hits on hits on your own shit. Every two, three years you come back, you got another banger for the people. You stay relevant. You stay fresh. You know what I'm saying? For a big dude in hip hop, you always represent. We don't take nothing from you, brother. Especially not me. I'm a terror squad nigga. I love everybody that came from that motherfucking team. But you got to hold the L on that one, man. Because you can't just come for niggas in Atlanta and think ain't nobody going to speak up for themselves. This is also another error in becoming an elder statesman in hip hop. You don't want to misquote niggas. You don't want to mislabel niggas. You don't want to uh, mistakenly say somebody bit your shit or took your shit. And you don't really know all the facts behind what you're saying. That's another part of becoming an elder statesman in hip hop. Some things are better left unsaid if you really don't know what the inspiration or the influence was. You can't just put that over some other nigga because the other nigga going to look at you and say, nigga, I ain't even we we really want to fucking with you like that. Like we give you respect for being here. We give you respect for having your spot, putting your foot down. But nigga, you got to understand we weren't playing your shit like that respectfully. And that's just how that shit ended up turning out. And the whole thing of it was Fat Joe made it about himself when it, the original conversation was not about him. It was about Boosie and Rod Wave. With the Boosie situation, you could literally hear word for word that Rod Wave had interpolated his old record. Boosie was mad because Rod Wave didn't reach out to him. Nobody came to him personally to clear the record. Rod Wave said he cleared it through the proper channels, through the uh, the publishing companies. At the end of the day, if they did clear it and went around Boosie because he didn't necessarily own that particular song, that's what it is. But the fact that Joe kind of inserted himself into that conversation, then made it about him, then started to pinpoint niggas from the South, Atlanta specifically, that may have made derivatives of what he thought was a derivative. Yeah, that's a murky game to get into. Now, the Make It Rain thing, yeah, you definitely introduced Make It Rain lingo to the game. I don't know who was saying Make It Rain before he did. It definitely became a terminology after Make It Rain came out, being that Wayne was on it. Once that song came out, niggas, 
Niggas in my high school was throwing they little $20 of M1s in the air at the pep rally and shit. We got to give you credit for that one. The way you tried to make a lump sum out of that goddamn, <laughs> out of that addition and subtraction. I don't know, man. That wasn't the, that wasn't the right way to go about that. Now, next up, we're going to get into this AI artist by the name of Anna Indiana. Some bullshit if you ever heard or seen it before, okay? So, boom. This video has 11 million views on Twitter right now. It says, hello world, I'm Anna Indiana and I'm an AI singer-songwriter. Here's my first song, Betrayed by This Town. Everything from the key, tempo, chord progression, melody notes, rhythm, lyrics, and my image and singing is auto-generated using AI. I hope you like it. There's also a disclaimer down here that says, the vocals in this video are provided by Synthesizer V. Natalie. However, it is against Synthesizer V terms of service to utilize the voice database using a name that is not of the database. Claiming that Anna is a singer while using Natalie is misleading and violates this rule. Uh, shout out to Dream Tonics for putting this disclaimer out there. Let's run it back to just hear what she's saying. My name is Anna Indiana, and I'm so excited to share my music with you. Here's my first song, Betrayed by This Town. As an AI singer-songwriter, everything from the key, tempo, chord progression, melody notes, they got rhythm, a face all slammed lyrics, and shit, man. And my image and singing trying to get off with this. is auto-generated using AI. I hope you like it. So they showing you the code on the screen, and she finna start singing. Now listen to this shit. Sitting at my favorite cafe Sipping my tea, it's Saturday Thinking about all he's done To everyone This town is full of <laughs> Hey man, get this bullshit out of here, man Get that fuck shit out of here, man Hey, I'm gonna be honest Hey, no disrespect, no disrespect, man Yo, y'all ever been to a white church before? I know I have Uh... What's crazy is I went to the white church with my African boy, my, my nigga Tarfa. His family go to the, go to, or at least they used to. I had to cut that off because that's what it sounded like. It sounded like white gospel. Can't do it, man. Get this AI shit out of here, though, man. Y'all putting so much time, energy, money, and resources into creating these AI characters. Get these niggas the fuck out of here, bro. It's real ass people out here putting their blood, sweat, and tears in the studio trying to figure out what to do musically. Niggas is going out sad trying to figure out what to do musically. And y'all out here trying to find the perfect equation on how to do this shit with a machine. We not with that shit, bro. I kind of let y'all live for a minute. We not letting y'all live no more. Y'all keep trying it, man. Put her ass with FM Mecca. Y'all want to come bring out this racially ambiguous motherfucker, uh, Anna. She ain't say nigga. She ain't do nothing offensive, but I'm offended by her presence. You know what I'm saying? We just going to start being real honest and real frank, real blunt about this type shit. Save it. If y'all want to invest into the music space, grab up a real independent ass nigga. Help them develop. It's too many niggas that got talent out here. It's too many people investing their last dollar in the studio and got genuine voices, genuine pin game. And y'all not giving them no shots. Y'all would rather develop code and sit back behind a fucking computer then to go on a nigga Instagram page and say, man, let's grab this nigga up, put him in the studio. Y'all can invest that same four, five hundred thousand or more that y'all put into this stupid ass shit to develop the technology to make her into a real person that's going to yield results. Actually be able to tour, go out in front of real people, shake hands. You know what I'm saying? Sign autographs, do meet and greets, and it don't be no holographic shit. Y'all got to get the fuck out to paint with this shit, man. And I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of independent artists out here that's being used as models for AI. It's some independent artists that are actually getting paid pennies on the dollar, $500, $1,000 to feed their music into a goddamn AI just so they could be discarded and moved out the, out the marketplace moving forward. I got to blame you niggas too. I seen the AI platforms that was looking for people. I deliberately did not sign up regardless of how much money I would like to make off music, regardless of the hustle I put into my music. I did not sign up for no shit like that because I already knew at that point, you're effectively training your replacement. Y'all got to stand up on your toes too at some point. Y'all got to hold your nuts and understand the talent that you have, the, the real dream that you have, and making the main thing the main thing out this motherfucker, man. Don't let these niggas trick you 
with a couple hundred dollars to feel like, oh yeah, you're doing something. Cause the minute niggas start accepting Anna, your shit is over with my nigga. Your ship is going to sail. They going to do virtual tours and all the other bullshit. The game going to be over. If you ain't got no other business about yourself, Dundee, my nigga. At the end of the day, I'm super passionate about music. I've put a lot into it myself. It's what I've dedicated my life to, which is why I talk about it, which is why I document it on my channel, which is why I even have the motivation to keep coming on this channel the way that I do. I love this shit too much to watch it just go down the drain. To the legends that we spoke about in this video, I hope that y'all can understand that it's nothing but love for y'all, that it's not backhanded compliments. I genuinely want to see y'all do well, but I want to see y'all do well by, by understanding who your fan base really is. Y'all don't got to reach anywhere outside beyond yourself and what you know is, is your strength. You don't have to try to be these young people. You don't have to try to be what the next nigga doing, what the young nigga straight out of high school is doing. Why would you ever want to do that near 40? At this point, the way that the industry is going, the way that the entertainment world is going at this point, authenticity is your biggest fucking calling card. If you don't want to genuinely be yourself, it is time to retire. All right. Let me know what y'all think of all this shit down below in the comments. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. And if you would like to continue to support your boy, hey, man, giving a super thanks ain't never going to hurt. Hitting, hitting the link in my description to check out my album, Southside Nolan, ain't never going to hurt. I'm going to put it out there. Some of y'all may do it. Some of y'all won't. But I want you to know I greatly appreciate it regardless. All right? Much love and respect. Peace. Yeah. King of my city in cul de sac. Uh. Coming, I swing like soldier ass. Yeah. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Yeah. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Yeah. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more to survive. I need my check. Yeah. Spinning the block for the gouda, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. Yeah. We don't do beef on computers, I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Yeah. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. Uh -huh. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully abreast. Yeah. I was ready for years and they doubted me. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. Yeah. I been dropping these haters. Like calories, uh, cross my mind, I came back with some batteries. Stand for my honor, but you run no counter. Packing a stick with a drum. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.